Sanskrit is the founder of sorry. He is the founder secretary of the Ramakrishna Mission, Port Player, Andaman. Andaman Island, huh? He's the founder secretary of the Ramakrishna Mission in Port Blair in Andaman Islands. He was the principal com secretary of the Ramakrishna Mission School, Narottam Nagar, Trip of Harunachal Pradesh. He was the vice president of the Uttarakhand uh, Uttarakhand uh, Purva Mission, Ramakrishna Vivekananda Bhava Prashar Parishad, with, which has got 59 centers. Since the beginning of 2013, he is serving Vivekananda Society of Chicago as its president. Under his leadership, the society observed 150th anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. In December 2014, he was appointed as one of the religious advisors at the University of Chicago. He has written many articles that have been published in Ramakrishna Mission journals and other journals as well. He has in his credit Bhagavad Gita, there is a DVD set in Bengali, collection of 42 lectures, CD in Bengali, lecture series on Patanjali, Yoga, Sutras, Why We Should Meditate, are the MP3 CD set, lecture series on the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Panchma Veda, MP3 CD set. They are all available at the uh, Vedanta uh, Center the library which is only a few minutes away from here. In addition to this, which I must say, all these good things he does, under his leadership, Vedanta Society, that was paid in full. That was a huge debt. And that was paid in full. And under his leadership, he is in the process of the opening ceremony they are conducting next, uh, next month. Uh, home of Harman, which is uh, near Urban Park and Ashland area, uh, to spread the gospel of Swami Vivekananda. With this, I will introduce the request for Amiji to please start your new chapter of today, and uh, we welcome you, and uh, thank you, thank you. It's a wonderful feeling, once again coming over here. Now, the two-year-long pandemic and so much of fear and tension and different type of bad news is constantly coming from different directions, different family. Slowly, slowly, people were losing the hope. And a good thing of that is a development of the online classes. So we could reach out to many people and that helped a lot. Because when we see the death in front of us, we stop automatically all our senses. And the senses which is stopped and which are stopped and not going out to enjoy the sense objects. So obviously make the mind pure. Friends, you know the purity and impurity, these are the two words constantly we talk about. What is the purity? Not thinking about the worldly objects, including our body and mind. This is very special. And what is purity? Only thinking about the God which is constant, which is the substance of everything. So this is the whole thing of the spiritual life. And religion means the process of that. Here in the Hindu temple that you have made this huge 
plot of land beautifully, utilizing all the different gods and goddesses, and also keeping one or two places where people can sit and discuss. Only coming to the temple and doing the rituals, not, not, that is not the complete Hinduism. Hinduism is also philosophy. So obviously, I congratulate you for thinking in that manner. And this particular place, which you have given the name Vivekananda Spiritual Center, and where you are inviting the Swamis from the Vedanta Society to discuss about the spiritual uh, scriptures. We are here, for, I think, a long, uh, almost eight years, seven to eight years are continuously going on reading different type of scriptures. And now we have already completed the Narada Bhakti Sutra, is a great book. And we are going to start Kapila Upadesha. This Kapila Upadesha, this is the Upadesha, you know the advices, advices of the Kapila. To whom? Very interestingly, to his mother. The Kapila, he was a great sage, he is giving advice to his mother. So before starting that, I will tell you the background of how it is coming and uh, let us chant that mantra of the Lord Vishnu who is at the back of everything. Yashya smarana matrena Janma samsara bandhanat Bimuchyate namastashmai Vishnabe prabhavishnabe I bow down to that Lord Vishnu, the great God, whose mere remembrance makes one free from the bondage of birth and death. So thus, this is the Lord Vishnu. Kapila Upadesha is from Bhagavata. And Bhagavata is completely dedicated to the Lord Vishnu and his incarnation, Rama and Krishna. <coughs> now here, the, the Vivekananda Spiritual Center will be studying the Bhagavata and this Bhagavata Purana is part of it. Bhagavata Purana is teaching us devotion. It's a book of devotion. But very specially, this devotion, devotions of two types, sorry. I had to keep this because everything is new and so wonderful. Only one thing you kept as it is, that is that clock, the wall clock. With the same time, after two years, the same timing. It's good, the history sense, you know. So. Well, next time you'll see a change. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind, just, you are my own people, so I'm just having fun. So, this... Uh, Kapila Upadesha is a part of the Bhagavata and Bhagavata is a book of devotion. And very specially, this devotion has two different parts. One is the Jnana Bhakti and Bhava Bhakti. Jnana Bhakti, the devotion that generates through knowledge. Knowledge means understanding, then discrimination, analysis, then only the knowledge is coming, the devotion is coming. Another is bhava bhakti, just out of emotion we love. So these two types of devotion are there. Though the most of the people they say that the Bhagavata is nothing but at the book of devotion and some of the people not understanding properly, they do not read Bhagavata 
thinking that it's a book of devotion, we are following the path of knowledge, so we won't read it. It is wrong. In the Bhagavata, so much of knowledge is there, understanding is there. And a the lot of discussions, a lot of anecdotes, stories are there. But at the same time, and some of the times the Lord Krishna is having the discussion with the Uddhava, the Uddhava Gita. The Uddhava Gita is there also. The Uddhava is asking question and the Lord Krishna is giving the reply. So that is also a unique way we understand. Here we will find that uh, one sage, Kapila, about whom the, the, some people have the doubt whether he is the famous Kapila, the founder of the Shamka philosophy or not, but most of the people, they accept this is the same Kapila. And this Kapila, he is advising to his mother. The Kapila Upadesha is actually Jnana Bhakti, is a devotion with knowledge. This conversation we will come to up slowly. Third Skanda, 20, 20th chapter that contains this conversation. This is the Bhagavata, the third Skanda, and it describes in good details the process of the creation by the first born Brahma. So, why they always talk about the creation? The friends, yesterday I was giving a talk on the Bhagavad Gita. They are also in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Very clearly, the Krishna is talking about the creation. Unless we know the details of it, how we can understand what is our real goal and how to reach to that goal. Emotionally, we just go to the temple and the holy places and whatever the list is there, we try to follow, but we reach nowhere. Just repetition, repetition, to some extent it is good, but at the same time, you are not getting the, the desired result. That is also there. If you go any part of the world, any society, anywhere, there will be people who are all religious people. Something or other they are believing and practicing. But you will never find the differences. Why? Even the so-called religious people are also so jealous, so angry, and try to grab. And why all this? This world that is there are constantly changing. So we are going to the God. So we have to give up something to get something. This is very simple. If we have to go to God, we have to give up the world. And to give up the world, what should we do? We have to understand what is this world and why we should give up this. Those who are not understanding, religion is not for them. They should continue. Animals, they don't bother about it. And we are not going to teach them the Kapilopodesha, are we? So we are not thinking about them, giving them food and some comfort. That is good for them. That's all. Human being is not, not like that. Why? We will come to that. So today, let us study the creation. And the Bhagavata, it gives in great details. And majority of the Vaishnava saints, they have accepted this description of the Bhagavata, how it came. It goes almost same to, some of the differences are there with the Advaita explanation. But the Bhagavata, they say, the Lord Vishnu is the creator. But now we say the Lord Vishnu, it was the Supreme God. So how it is coming? The Supreme Lord from his mind created Brahma. It's not Brahman that we say the, the ultimate goal of the Vedantin. It is not. It is Brahma. And who created Supreme Lord? Who is this Supreme Lord? We do not know. The first, we have to have some conception like this. This is the Supreme Lord who is all-pervading. 
not having any form. He is the consciousness. He, as if thinking that I should create, not directly, he has created out of his own mind. We have to keep it in mind that he is not created physically, just the thought. And from him, Brahma was created. Then he gave the Brahma all the knowledge that is called Veda. Veda means knowledge. So how to create and all this? Then for the creation, you need some qualities. And he gave three qualities, Satta, Raja, Tama. Almost all people, the modern people, particularly the Hindus, they hear these three words again and again, Satta, Raja and Tama. These are the three qualities. Friends, we are also having the Satta, Raja, Tama. That sometimes we are so kind, so good, so generous, and sometimes we are not exactly opposite people we see. And sometimes we see the good people with tremendous ego. The Satta, Tama, in between the Raja. And whole creation that we see is nothing but the permutation and combination of these three qualities. Now this is the basic of the creation. Who is creating? The Supreme Lord. Why? We don't know. That's why sometimes the Hindus will say, it is Leela. Leela means divine sports. We do not know. We will go to ask the God why you have created. How he is creating? First, he is creating a creator who is Brahma. And then the Lord, Supreme Lord giving him a whole knowledge. And also the tools to create. And the tools are Satta, Raja, Tama. This is the first. I'm, I won't go in the details. There are beautiful details are there. Those who are interested, you can read that chapter of the Bhagavad, Bhagavad, that in every details how the Brahma is creating, how the serpents, the snakes are created, then the Asuras were created, and the Brahmanas were created, all, every details are there. Then Sattva Rajatama, the Supreme Lord wanted that. Now the Brahma started creating. Again, without any ego. He is creating this universe at the behest of the Supreme Lord and Lord gave him the knowledge and also the tools and he is creating and in the creation sometimes he himself is becoming the, very much afraid what I am doing. When he created the Asuras from the Tamas, from the Tamagunas, the Asuras were created. They were so dangerous. So they themselves chased the Brahma. And the Brahma had to go to the Supreme Lord and praying to him, Pahimam Paramatma Ste Peshanena Srijam Prajaha. I myself is not creating the Praja. You asked me to do so, I did that. Pahimam. Pahi means please protect me, save me. Even the Brahma is also requesting and praying to the Supreme Lord for this safety. So where we will go? To the Supreme Lord. Why? From this creation if we like to go out. And what is our goal actually? What is the goal of the spirituality? You are organizing wonderful yajnas, regular puja, Sometimes you are inviting the Swamis to give the talk. I think the next month or this month and the Swami Sarvapriya will come and there will be a huge crowd and all these things are going on. Every time, every time, every time we are coming and attending, attending, attending. But wait, what we are gaining? What we are gaining? Sometimes we go and tell our uh, the relatives and friends, oh, we always go to the temple and we feel satisfied. I go to the temple, not to the bar, and not to any other thing. I go to the temple. Good. And your, the children are also very happy. My parents are going to the temple. They all have the little that respect. That's okay. 
Then what? This is the question. You are spending money. You are spending your time. And also physically you are also working so much. Well established, respected people. They are coming and sweeping. Putting on the light, putting off the light, closing the door. All sorts of things you are doing. For what? Just to pass time? You have to ask this. That is the true religion. We come and we listen and we discuss and then we take the food and just uh, say hello, meeting and greeting. Everything is okay in the human society. But ultimately what we are carrying from here? Entertainment? Some people are coming there and dances, religious dances, religious songs, religious discourses. But what I am getting from that? Entertainment or enlightenment? The time is short. We have seen so many close friends, so many known people. Suddenly they were nowhere. We are blessed but by the grace of God that still today we could survive that terrible thing. Now we are coming to the religion and in the religion before we go for the discussion of the high standard uh, philosophical discussion between a son and the mother, we have to understand the creation. The creation is created by the supreme God himself through Brahma and with the power of Sattva Rajatama. And in this Sattva Rajatama, the Tama, the worst thing, is the anger, the jealousy, and all bad qualities. It has also come from God. The same God. Even the Brahma was afraid after creating this Tamasic people. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna used to say, when this type of people will come, when they go out, he will say, sprinkle Ganga water over there. Because they are constantly thinking, so selfish type of people. Going and meeting them, taking their, eating with them or having their company also will drag your mind to that. They cannot think of anything else but only the physical enjoyment. So that is the tamasa. O Par Paramatma, protect me from this created being. Who created Brahma? Even then Brahma is afraid. So why it is? To uh, tell us, be very, very careful from this type of creatures. And I created them at your behest only. The Brahma is addressing the Supreme Lord. I didn't create out of my own. I created because you wanted to create them. So when we are burning the... So this is the beauty of the Hinduism. In the... In the, in the Ram, that they burn the, uh, the statue or sometimes the, some edifice of the... What is called the Ravana and all that. In, in, but who is this Ravana? It is also the creation of the God. So this is the beauty of the Hinduism. We never say that... This is different than God. Everything from the God. But God is completely different from his creation. And when after all this, does Brahman consider himself self-satisfied? Now, he created everything. The river, the mountain, the birds, the serpents, the age, and everything he created. And he was satisfied. Then he said... Sa atmanam mannamana krita krita meva atma bhuhu. So, so that Brahma, atmanam mannamana, they are engaged from his mind, the manus, immersed from his mind. Atmanam, from his mind, the manus. And these manus are the human being. Manava, so the manu, the first created human. The first created human, how he created? Brahma was so happy after creation of the human. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, do you think the human beings are ordinary? They can meditate on God. That is 
very special. No one else can do. Only human being can do. Only human being can meditate on God, the supreme being. No one else. So that is the speciality of the human being. So he is meditating, he is mentioning, sa atmanam mannamana kritakrittamiba atma bhu. The third skanda, 20th chapter, 49 verse. There emerged from his mind the manus capable of populating the world. Tada manun sasarja ante manasa lok bhavanan. Then Brahma gave them his own man like body. The Brahma created out of his own imagination different things. But when he created the Manus, he created them as if it is he. His man-like body. The first time the human form came. If, we, if you go to the Christian this, uh, theology also, their stories are the same. The God created man out of his own image. They explain it different way. That is, a, I don't know, good, wrong or right. But God created man out of his own image. And what is this image? That means God was looking like me. Brahma was looking like me, like you, like he, but like she. No. The quality. As Brahma could think, Brahma could meditate, Brahma could withdraw the mind, Brahma could send his mind and enjoy the object, all these qualities he gave to the human being. So that is the reason human being is so special of all the creatures. In the Christianity, in the Islam, in the Islam also you will find the, the Allah after creation of the human being, he asked all the, uh, the, the previously created being to come and pay respect to that human being. Then they said, no, why should I? one person, all came and they touched the feet and prayed the respect. But only one person said, why? I am born before him. You have created me before him. I am not going to pay respect to the human. So the God expelled him and he became the devil. So that is their story. In Christianity also, the same story. Here in Hinduism also, same story. Same thing, the ultimate creation is the best creation is the human being. And after creating the human, tada manun sasarja ante manasa loko bhavanam. He gave his own form to them. All this creation of Brahma were mind born. He thought and he created, mind born. Sometimes you will find that you have seen something, or maybe a movie, and then when you are sleeping or just quietly sitting, you are seeing those things vividly before you. How it is? You are creating from your mind. This is called mind born. The same way the Brahma, he created the, these all people mind born, all creation. Brahma thought and it was created. The, then Brahma gave his own man like body to them and the mind born creation. From now onwards, creation will continue through physical contacts. This is the first time. And how it will start? At the first marriage was happened, the for man and the woman. That is the parents of the Kapila. So this is the first human marriage. And at that time, whatever was for they, they practiced, that has come down as a system of Hindu marriage. This is very special. This first marriage was happened over here. It says, then the, to understand this creation again, Bidura requested Maitreya. Maitreya was the Rishi 
and Vidura was asking, and through this question answer, uh, all these descriptions are coming, and Maitreya said, Sayambhu vasya cha manoha bamsha parama sammataha kathyatam bhagavan yatra maithunena idhire prajaha is the third skanda 20, first, 21 chapter, the first verse, he is asking, Vidura asking, O great one, the Maitreya, the Rishi, you have heard the name, the Maitreya. Please narrate the line of Sayambhu Manu. Sayambhu, that they were created themselves, by themselves. So Sayambhu is the, sometimes about the Shiva they say, the Sayambhu, no one created itself, it came. So Sayambhu Manu, the mind born. So they were there, which multiplied by sexual reproduction. How it was? Who are they? So he is asking this. And it is going on in this way. Before we go to this Prakriti, then let me tell you a creation tree according to the Bhagavad. What is this creation tree? The beginning is the Parama Brahma or Purushottama. These are the two words we are using. Parama Brahma, those who are following the path of the jnana knowledge, Parama Brahma. And those who are following the path of devotion, Dvaita, duality, it is Purushottama. Always the Vaishnavas, they will say Purushottama. Purusha Uttama. What is this Purusha? Male? Usually the Purusha means the male, but no, it is not. It is that which is inside of all beings. That means the consciousness. When the consciousness, Uttama, the highest, the best, I am having consciousness within me, you are, you are, you are everyone. But that Uttama, that's the all sum total of all this consciousness, that is called Purusha Uttama. The Purusha Uttama. So this Purusha Uttama, that means the Supreme Lord, Supreme Being, from it comes one Purusha and Prakriti. And Purusha again is the knowledge. And Prakriti, action. The knowledge and action together. Without knowledge, no one can perform anything. And without action, knowledge is useless. I know how to make this food, but I am not doing it. Then what is the use of it? There's so many people, they know so many things, but they are not utilizing that knowledge. It's a wastage. So Purusha and Prakriti, that means knowledge and action should, should go hand in hand. And on the basis of this, another group of people, another group of Hindus, they have created Tantra. And the Tantra you find the Ma Kali. And the Ma Kali, the Shiva is lying down and Ma Kali is standing on Shiva. Shiva is a symbol of knowledge, Purusha. Ma Kali is the symbol of action, Prakriti. But most of the Hindu temple that I have visited, they don't keep Ma Kali's image or the, because they are afraid. Wrong. Because wrongly we interpreted, but seeing that image, we thought, oh my God, this lady cutting the head and she is not wearing any clothes. How people will think about it? There may be that. But this is the unique conception, the abstract idea of Prakriti and Purusha that was given in the form shape of a statue, of a murti, of a picture, that you can imagine how the Purusha and Prakriti are acting. So this is Goddess Kali. And she is not cutting the head of anyone. She is the symbol of knowledge, creating, creation. Now this Purusha and Prakriti, Chetana and Achetana, this again. Then Mahatattva or the Buddhi, Next comes the buddhi, mahatattva. What is buddhi? As a student of the Vedanta for a long period of time, you know 
that uh, they say there are four parts mana buddhi chitta ahamkara right so what is mana so we are not yet we can't take the decision but we are thinking shall i do this or shall i not so when i am thinking in that way that is called mana that part of the mind in english it is all mind but it's called antakkarana antakkarana is a first stage can i or shall i or like that goes on when you are decisive yeah i can do that that is called buddhi so here it comes mahat tattva adda buddhi and from that comes ahamkara and this ahamkara is the basis of all creation and bhagwan sri ramakrishna when he was giving the teaching of the spirituality he said each and every human should realize god that is their ultimate goal manushya jivaner uddeshya ishwar la only the god realization should be the goal of human life how the god realization then he said you have to eradicate the ego the moment you remove the ego what remains that is god and what is this ego this is very peculiar each and every one of us so egoistic if you say oh you cannot say like that immediately anger and you cannot do this immediately so it is so much of ego but now if you ask them to explain what is this ego is this body no it is not is this mind no it is not so what is ego then i say i i i and that i sometimes i say the when i was a small little kid on the lap of a lady and that picture if someone shows me who is this i won't be able to recognize that it is me unless somebody else say this is you suppose i don't know my mother and a picture is there that when i was a baby i was lying on the lap of my mother and someone shows me this is the picture whose picture is this i won't be able to because i don't know my mother and i don't know me and what is this me then where from this anger came comes where from this ego comes it's so useless but because of this ego all these things are happening all over the world just because of this ego and those who have understood it and have decided to go back to the root for mm-hmm. the ultimate joy the bliss the goal of human life is joy bliss in the not beginning that people used to ta- teach us you have to become a doctor you have to become an engineer you have to become a professional and uh, all after all those things we find no it is not that was not the goal the goal is the peace when i go back to my room close the door when i am all alone no one around am i happy peaceful soul that is the question i have to ask and that is spirituality when we are with with the friends with the relatives and constantly our mind is going on working that oh i don't have time so it goes on nicely but once you become completely lonely are you happy that is the test of spirituality completely alone but always happy that is the test of spirituality if we don't understand that after spending whole life in pursuit of spirituality we reach nowhere so here they teach it is the ahamkara and from the ahamkara pancha gyanendriya pancha karmendriya and the mana is born created pancha gyanendriya we all know the chakshu karna nashika jiva tag the eye the uh, nose and the ear and the skin etc all the pancha gyanendriya pancha karmendriya the same way and the mana the mind and from the hunger again these are the instruments of enjoyment but you need the object of in- enjoyment otherwise suppose you have everything 
so that you can cook rice, but you don't have rice. Then what is the use? So we need rice too. So God is giving us the instruments for enjoyment and also the object. How? From Ahamkara again. And so he is creating from the Ahamkara Pancha Tanmatra. You must have heard these words in the Vedantic words. Pancha Tanmatra. What is this Pancha Tanmatra? Rupa, Rasha, Shabda, Sparsha, Gandha. It is the form, the taste, the sound, touch and smell. The Hindus are so specific, so scientific. They won't give the list of millions, no, only five. And everything is created of these five. And who is enjoying? My eyes are going and seeing that form and enjoying. My nose is enjoying the smell. Like this, all pancha indriyas are enjoying. And pancha sthula bhuta. Sthula means gross. Bhuta means the matter. What is that? Shiti, apa, tej, marut and boma. Shiti means the earth. And if you go and ask these our pujaris, what are the things that you are using for the arati? All the time they are showing only light because how many times they can do. But when they do the complete aruti, they will be showing five things. Every evening we are doing, you can come and see five things. First, there will be a flower, must be. Why? Is the symbol of, of the earth, shiti. And there will be a conch full of water, they will be showing that. Why? Because the water is the main thing that God created. Pancha tattva, is always say, the first is the earth, the water, the fire, the air, and the space. The when you show the air, then they will be showing the chamara. And the space, you will find a small piece of cloth, and the pujari is showing like this. That is the pancha tattva, the five gross things. So this is the creation. And when this was created, the God created the human also. And by this way, slowly we are understanding. Sorry. Now he is telling Maitra is giving the reply. He asked how they created that the Rishi Maitra is telling, Sayambhu basya cha manoho vamsa parama sambhataha kathatam bhagavan yatra maitu nena edhire prajaha. Then he is giving the reply. Bidura replied, uh, requested the Rishi Maitra to narrate. And he mentioned, and I am not mentioning, we are not interested in that. He mentioned some other couples also. First is Maharshi Ruchi and Akuti. Akuti the daughter of a Manu. So these, they also, again another Daksha, that you know the Daksha Prajapati. From there the Durga and all the came. The Daksha and also Prasuti, the daughter of the Manu. But we shall restrict ourselves to another couple and they are Prajapati Kardama Rishi and Devahuti, the daughter of Sayambhu Manu. So these are the first. The just they went and married. No, not like this. So that's why Swami Vivekananda said, when a son is born out of prayer, so that is the spiritual son. And that is called the highest culture. Here we will find the first person. Their marriage was the first human marriage and their son was Kapila, about whom we will know. Kapila gave the, uh, the teaching to his mother. The question is why? Why not his father? The father could teach his wife. Why the son is giving? We usually we don't do. But here, if we hear the story, then we will understand. Let us listen to the Maitra. Maitra is telling, 
प्रजा सृजेति भगवान् कर्तम ब्रह्मनोदित सरस्वत्याम तपस्ती सहस्राणा सामदश द फास्ट गॉड द सुप्रीम ब्रह्म ही केम एंड टोल दिस कर्दमा मुनि यू हैव टू क्रिएट प्रजा यू हैव टू जेनरेट एंड व्हाट ही डिड नॉट आउट ऑफ लास्ट इमीडिएटली ही वेंट एंड सैट बाय द बैंक ऑफ द सरस्वती रिवर एंड मेडिटेटेड फॉर टेन इयर्स and the intensity of that spiritual practice was so much as if 10000 years and you will find in our uh, this uh, uh, this books in the scriptures the intensity that sometimes they will say uh, you will f- actually it is only 20 centigrade but intensity is 30 like that so intensity was 10000 years and he practiced meditation after this practice Uh, uh, this go and engage yourself in increasing human population ordered the brahma being ordered kartama went on the banks of the sharashati river and performed spiritual austerity being very much pleased with kartama sri bhagavan the supreme being showed himself to him this is the first time he is coming in the form of vishnu it was all pervading consciousness and no one knew how it is one or twice only we have found but this is the first time the kardama muni he saw the lord vishnu i am not uh, giving that description if you read that is a beautiful description of the lord vishnu shankha chakra gada padma dhari that vishnu is appearing before him and asking him that you should marry a lady who will come with her father and parents to you don't say no i will come as a son to you the kapila is that supreme lord who came as a son of kartama and prajapati o oh lord you are always merged now the kapila after his realization he is telling this is very important and then afterwards we will go for the other discussion the kapila after realization he said you are always merged in your own bliss and at the same time carrying on the activities through your power yoga maya without being attached yomam vetti tattatah those who have read the bhagavad gita many of you and you know this word yomam vetti tattatah tattva the god is telling some people they know me emotionally but those who have understood it in reality what is me they will get the freedom they will constantly have my company what is this tattva what is the truth the god has created all this uh, today in the introduction to this book the god has created everything but he is completely detached from it he created he gave the knowledge he gave the tools satya raja tama and he created through the brahma he guided the brahma and everything he did at his but at the same time he is not attached to this so this is the tattva this is the truth if we can understand it is everything is nothing but the god's creation but the god is completely detached from it that's why the hindus they will say purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnam adaya purnameva avashishyate if you take out the whole thing from the whole it will the whole will remain why because it is completely if you have taken not the original but the reflection so that is now this the god is asking him to fulfill and he is giving the information the lord of the sapta deepa the india was known as the sapta deepa the seven islands sapta deepa you were 
almost the whole world you know this the whole world was that so they used to say that the whole world was that that is the sapta that sapta deepa and this sapta deepa the king of the sapta deepa he will come to you with his daughter and request you to marry her because i have asked him to do that and you must marry her the kardama said okay but i have a condition what is that condition after one or two children please allow me to go back to the monastic life i will go and meditate i don't like to be in this world why because there is no interest in it when the rishis they used to marry and many people they say that we should not become monk because the rishis they used to marry their mind was completely detached they used to do that because that time population was very less so each and every one was asked to populate this world because god has created you must have to do that and this is the first marriage of a man and a woman and the kapila will be the first human like us was born but that human was none other than the supreme lord vishnu we will be discussing about this in our next class and this is a unique way we will enter into the philosophy of the kapila we will discuss uh, how the kapila is advising his mother at the same time if it is possible because it will be little another you know, difficult that uh, the philosophy of samkhya the samkhya philosophy is very interesting philosophy and accepted by each and every one only one or two points the shankaracharya differed and he that made that vedanta philosophy the one or two points because the explanation so thank you friends thank you for this if you have any question on this we can ask if you can ask i can try to reply and at the same time as they decided to teach some meditation course we can try that too for some time any question amrish ji kuch to puch lijiye Uh, home of our mm. uh, and then uh, uh, everybody should be they're all invited that they should be here and make it a huge success based on this first uh, for more information i am always available from the vedanta society and uh, please help make that so very successful ha so uh, for that uh, uh, let me announce that the 21st may all the swamis of the our in north america they will be coming so we are we i thought it will be a very gala uh, program but this time i am keeping it i was thinking to in, invite the swamis from outside also but no it won't be possible this time still people are not the very free so it will be uh, 300 or, or maximum 350 people will be inviting we have invited the vice president of the um, this Uh, america and from her office we have received a letter considering i don't know whether she will come or not usually they don't come but if they come and uh, it is not any political thing as because if they come it is an idea that we are going to present to the world when all are conflicting all are egoistic all are saying my path is the best there we are taking the beautiful idea of bhagwan sri ramakrishna of course your path is correct but that is not the only path you others can also reach god understand this much that's all not that you have to become a hindu not that i have to become a christian or muslim or buddhist your path of course it is correct to you and my path is also correct the some people they like dosa itli and if they say only dosha itli should be eaten by whole humanity what how will 
it will be. So just like that, some people like to make one quote and they like to put it on everyone. So that is not possible. So this is the beautiful Hinduism which was in the beginning, the millions of years before, they decided ekam sat vipra bahudha badanti and that has been practiced by Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna once again in his own life presented. If we are not, as a being the followers of the Ramakrishna Vivekananda ideology, if we are not presenting it, propagating it, then who else will do? We, you will wonder, we wanted to spread the Christianity, Islam, Buddhism. We are not getting teachers. Why? I know this much Christianity, only Catholic and that too this much. I can't understand others and I don't like to know them also. I told, can you develop a, a course on Christianity? No, there is no, no one ready. Buddhism also same. They only have small, small groups. That much they know. Can you imagine? Islam, 21 schools are there in Islam. <laughs> so many. So, and each and everyone is telling, I can talk, talk about myself only and my group. And, so this is the high time that we should understand. So we have, with the help of you devotees, uh, purchased a, a old church. We have renovated it, developed it, and it is almost ready. Just uh, some, um, something uh, like the painting and all those. And the statue of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna has also come, and that will be there. Everything is ready. 21st May, we will inaugurate it. We are trying to take out a procession if we get the permission from the local authority. There, all the religious leaders with their symbols and with their attire and with their, uh, we will hand in hand, we will walk and let people see that it is possible to be united, standing on the same platform. And after this, uh, we'll be inviting different religious groups, some professors also, and cultural groups so that we can meet together. So then, suppose you have a friend in the Muslim community, Jewish community, uh, uh, other religious community, it's so wonderful. Hey, you can just take up the phone and can talk to them. So that gives the, gives the broad mindedness. That is my idea. And let us see how far we can do. Yes. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Right, sure. That uh, he asked me to announce that. Sure, sure. I'm sorry. I was just... No, no, I'm, I was not propagating this program. So meditation will surely will do. Huh? Huh? You can put off. Mm -hmm.